year, yeah. uh, I guess this year, <laughs> last year, we uh, long time. We decided we'd do punishments, and I have lost. I think it's been twelve out of thirteen times over on Patreon. Um. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, you've gotten more votes than me every month, other than once, which I still think that Carolina Reaper punishment is my favorite punishment. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I don't mind it. I go. I, I the the video just popped up the other day, and I watched it. I was like, it's it's funny to watch. So no. got that going for it. Um, but I've kind of slacked off the last few months with being sick and being busy, and I haven't paid up the punishments in a timely fashion. <laughs> Boo. But this last week I had some time. So I sat down and I watched the last three that I owed. Oh, uh, all three, huh? Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, so you, you had chosen Samson. It's a, a yeah. pure flicks movie. It's the Christian pure flicks. Um, <laughs> Samson based on the story of Samson, the judge from book of judges who mm-hmm. helped kind of save the Israelites. Uh, I guess we can start there. It's not a terrible movie. I think I told you it's kind of like the TBS version of 300 or Gladiator. Like the action is uh, lower quality. The writing's kind of lower quality, but it's right. nowhere near as bad as a lot of the other no. Pure Flix stuff. No, it was, it was fine. Like it wasn't good. That's for sure. It's definitely, I don't recommend watching it. I don't think it's like a fun movie. But in comparison to it being like a punishment, it really wasn't that bad. Um, I mean, it's a little goofy here and there. There's some moments where he gets in a big fight and like kills like 30 guys. And he sits down. And he's like, God, I praise you. And uh, <laughs> it just seemed like a weird tonal response because I don't believe that would be the case. Like, even if you were like, God is the reason yeah. I, I won this battle. I don't feel like that's your first response. You, I think like your first response is like, oh, wow, that was intense. You know what I mean? Like that. I think it takes some time to connect the two, but maybe I'm just not a very good Christian. So there's. That's probably it. Yeah. Um, but over, overall, like it was pretty good when they gouge out the eyes. That's a is a pretty like intense moment, which mm-hmm. I didn't expect. Like I knew. Well. I knew it was coming story wise, but I oh, you read the book. I've read it once or twice, but the okay. uh, uh, I didn't expect it to feel intense in the movie because, like I said, Pure Flix is right. But uh, yeah, there's so there's, I don't have a lot to say about that one. Um, for the last month, or for December, no, for November, man, I, I'm way I'm way too far Get behind. It together. Uh, for losing in November, you chose the Trump prophecy. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Which okay. that so part of the reason why it took me so long to get to it is because I couldn't find a copy of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I did find one on ChristianCinema.com. They had it for rent over there. It's like five okay. bucks, which was oh, painful. Yeah, uh, that that hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. So I, I watched that. It's about a firefighter who in 2012. Now, uh, is this, this is based on a true story, correct? Um, it's, I think it's based Alleged. on a, a true lie. Oh, okay. Like this guy actually lived and said he did these things. But I, I, I don't know if saying it's based on a true story is, you know what I'm saying? Like right. the, in the movie, they're saying it's true, but it's, I don't think it's based on a true story. Um, he, so he's a firefighter and he's in a, he's in a house that's burning down and he finds a little kid and the kid's dead and it really throws him for a loop. He's got like PTSD and he's, you know, freaking out. Then he starts having nightmares and he's seen like this demon show up and it's just tormenting him, tormenting him, tormenting him. And he's just like, he can't handle it. He's freaking out. And he keeps talking to people and he's telling them about it. And they're kind of giving him like, these are like delusions. Like this isn't something you really need to be afraid of type of attitude, yeah. you know? Um, and then the last one that he has is an angel who shows up 
and tells him that Trump is going to run for office and become president. And so he writes all this stuff down about how Trump is going to be, um, what's the guy's name in Israel? The Benjamin Netanyahu, I want to say. Benjamin Bratt. Um, he's, Trump is going to be that to America as Benjamin, I think it's Netanyahu. I feel like I'm butchering that, is to Israel. And just like he is a staunch listener of this podcast. So yeah, not I know. Gonna be he's going to be upset. Um, so Trump is going to, you know, fix the, fix the direction of society in America and all this stuff. Um, uh, but then, so the people around him kind of like, so before when it was a demon, they're like, this is somewhat delusional. But then when it was the angel, they're like, oh, wow, maybe this is something serious. Maybe this is real. And it seemed like a weird misconnect to me. Like, yeah. Okay, when it's negative, it's not real. But when it's positive, it's it is real. It's something worth trusting. It's like it seems a bit too inconsistent. Um, yeah. But you know, obviously, in 2012, Trump didn't run, and so the guy's like, "I don't know, I don't get it." And then the movie jumps forward four years, and now Trump is running, and so he pulls out this prophecy and is like, "Look at what the prophecy that God gave me." And he shows it to his pastor, therapist. It's a little confusing. Maybe it's both. Maybe he's a pastor, therapist. I don't know if that's a thing. And he's like, we need to show this to my wife. She's really good with dreams. And then she comes and reads it. And she's like, I don't know. This just has the flavor of being true uh, from the Holy Spirit. It was like the cadence of the Holy Spirit, like, the way it reads, it sounds like what the Holy, how the Holy Spirit would talk about this stuff. And it, she repeats that line like two or three times, and it's it's weird because um, they're like saying, "We think this is true, but it we can't prove that it's true, but it feels like it's true, so you should trust us anyways." Is kind of what the okay. movie was trying to do. Um, and then it turns into her just calling people to start a uh, a prayer chain, like a conference prayer call for Trump to become president. And so the, the movie, seriously, the story is five minutes long. It's this guy was a firefighter. He got PTSD, started seeing demons, saw an angel. The angel told him that Trump is going to be president. They started a prayer chain. Trump got elected president. They think it's because of the prayer chain. That's okay. the entire story. They drag it out for so long and it's so slow and the acting is so, so terrible. Um, it is not. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. This was, this made up for Samson for sure. Like for as much as Samson was like, this is somewhat confident. This was awful. And this was done by Liberty University, which is who did um, Saving Christmas with Kirk Cameron <laughs> and these are oh, all the okay. same people. And it was, I uh, need to just look at their movies and just go down I don't, this. yeah, I don't know if they have more, but this, they're, they're awful. Um, but, and then, so the movie wraps up, right? So she gets the prayer chain going or whatever. And, uh, um, the, <laughs> the movie finishes and it goes into a music video. That is oh so like at the end of Saving Christmas, where they don't they do like a dance they, type? yeah so they do a dance off in Saving Christmas but in this this is like basically I can't remember if credits roll or not I feel like they save the credits for after but the movie's over you would have credits in this spot and then a, a five minute music video turns on like what you would find like on MTV but obviously not. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it has no connection to the movie. Right. It, it's just a, a separate thing that they put in here to pad <laughs> it out. And this oh, was my wife. I showed my wife it because it's so ridiculous. She's like, this is the most American Christian Republican thing I could ever imagine. And oh, cool. none of those are good artists. <laughs> like, no. it, it was, it, it was so bad. And it was just like flags, bald eagles people walking in parks just like all these images flashing up but the the lyrics were something about like standing up for uh freedom and the the soldiers who stood up for freedom and we should stand up for them and it just seemed so very clearly anti 
kneeling at the NFL. Like that every time it's just like, oh, okay. stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Like that's 95% of the lyrics is like, you should be standing up for, for America and all this stuff. And it just was like tonally weird. Like why? Okay. Why have this in here? And why? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's all political, right? Like it's all about Trump becoming president. So it's that it kind of fits but it really doesn't like it the story doesn't make any sense consistently with that music right. video oh that's great and then the music video wraps up and there's a 30 minute band of brothers style interview with all these like politicians talking about uh um oh what well, it was some verse about like how we need to was it pray for our leaders and God will bless it or something like that? Like it is the uh-huh. verse they kept using to, are you yawning? Are you bored just by me explaining this to you? It sounds and, so, as uh, soon as you said 30 minutes of the interviews, I was like, Oh, yeah. this sucks. It was awful. I'm so happy with it. Though. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, but I, like, I can't even tell you what they said because it was like, they would speak for like five seconds and then it would cut to someone else who would like continue on. But it, there's no like consistency or cohe- like they cohesiveness. They were so clever to kind of like that. It was it was really bad. And now I don't think supporting Trump is a racist thing. I, I, mm-hmm. I want to say that first. I don't think there's. I don't think you have to be white to be a Trump supporter. I don't think right. being a Trump supporter makes you racist. But there is only white people in this movie. There was oh, I'm sure. just white people, and it felt very apparent throughout the entire thing. It was like, Jeez. oh, I mean, other than the kid who got burned, but he was probably white when he started. He started um, white. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was awful. And uh, the next movie for losing in December that you chose for me was I Feel Pretty oh. with Amy <laughs> Schumer. <laughs> and, Ooh, this is an wow. A-list movie. Wow. But it's Amy Schumer. So ugh. this was terrible. Uh, we, I, we got over on Discord. Someone asked me if I disliked, which, which did I dislike more? Uh, I feel pretty or Trump prophecy. And I think I dislike, uh, I feel pretty more because you watch the Trump prophecy and you know what it is. You know exactly yeah. what you're getting into, right? Like the quality is going to be low. It's all low budget. There's not, there's no reason for it to be great. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it could be, right? And low budget doesn't mean that it's low quality, but you you can figure it out pretty quickly what, you, what you're getting. Right. I Feel Pretty is like a big budgeted movie with like a lot of people connected to it. And, you know, it's like, why did this get made? There's just an... Because they yeah, sure. Oh, she's not funny <laughs> um, no she's awful she's a terrible person and very very unfunny yeah so the whole the whole thing is it's kind of a body switch movie almost but without the body switch she falls down and hits her head so she like she's really self-conscious and she doesn't feel great about herself and you know is just like overweight and dirty and gross is basically what they establish um based on her real life okay and then she hits her head or something she like because she like screams to the sky that she wants to be better and hits her head and the next day she wakes up and she looks in the mirror and she like sees herself and like you never see what she sees but she sees herself as like in perfect shape and just you know as perfect as you can be Mm -hmm. um and goes out and lives her life and is always So the weird part is the joke is look at this overweight lady thinking that she isn't, isn't that so funny? But then they try to tie in a message at the end of no, be happy with who you are. And we're all, you know, we should be proud of ourselves and like all this stuff. But it's like, wait, how are you going to make her the butt of the joke for being delusional and yet try to be like, oh, positivity. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it doesn't, there's no, it doesn't add up at all. Um, oh, okay. 
but she becomes like super conceited and is always like talking down to people like i know you don't really understand what it's like to be as beautiful as me and like all this stuff none of the beautiful people in the movie are conceited like that nobody acts like that it's only her and so it's like it's not even there's no like commentary on it or like anything it's just she thinks being beautiful is the best and that's it that's the only like there's no there's like a few people who are like judgmental and like treat her like wow your confidence kind of overcomes how ugly you are so i guess i'll give you a chance (laughs) but it really is awful none of the jokes land none of the i don't even know it like i i I have a hard time even calling them jokes because like i said it all it is is just can you believe this lady thinks that she's attractive isn't that so funny or look at her being so conceited when she's so ugly isn't that funny and none of it's funny it's it i don't know It, it, it made me really upset so would you say this is the worst one uh, out of all the punishment movies, yeah, or out of these three, because I would or say uh, Saving Christmas is by far the worst. It's worse than the Trump one, huh? Yeah, oh, I because think because so. you hate Christmas. I forgot. I hate Christmas. Uh, no, because Kirk Cameron is just so smug. Oh, I know his smuggy I've face. I've been saying it for years. <laughs> he's got the punchable face, and now I think you finally see it. Um, I don't know if I would say he's got a punchable face, but he's definitely he's got his air. He's got like his air of smugness about him yeah that's Uh, what makes me want to punch his face (laughs) um but i feel pretty is up there it's up there so it's not the worst made one right the writing's terrible and oh no i'm sure it's got the quality the themes are bad but like the it's just like this one shouldn't be so bad like i get why the other ones are bad this one i don't understand at all similar with Gotti. Like Gotti was really bad in a way that makes zero sense. It's like you guys are professionals. You this well, is what your job I is. I don't know if I would call John Travolta a professional. Oh yeah. Maybe in the nineties. <laughs> I don't know. I can't John Travolta's never really been any good. Oh, I definitely say he had his eighties, ninety or even seventies, eighties. Mm. He got Saturday I mean, Night Fever. You got Grease. I never saw Saturday Night Fever, so I'll give you that one. Grease is good, but the musical is great. It's not, John Travolta doesn't really do a good job. He's kind of weird in it. He's weird, but I don't mind him in that. Um, But it it fits. His weirdness kind of fits the character, but like, yeah, I don't know. Um, Yeah. Mm. Look who's talking, but he's also no weird in that Uh, face off. He does a good job, but it's. I, because they played on him already being a weirdo. That's what I'm saying. Like anytime he needs that to be. That was when he started his descent. Maybe anytime this he, isn't the real John Travolta. <laughs> anytime he needs to be like uncomfortably creepy, he does a really good job at it. Yeah, but it's not acting apparently. It's so perfect that him and Nicolas Cage are both in that movie, and they're both so like almost outcast at this point. Well, I feel like Nick Cage is not, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call him an outcast. I think people enjoy his craziness because uh, I feel like he oh. doesn't, he doesn't have a, a message driving him. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, oh, he, you mean Scientology? Yeah, like Scientology. He doesn't have like, he's not, um, what is it? He's not like evangelizing something, you know, some ideology. Yeah. He's, he's just crazy. And people are like, all right. Like if that's what you want to do, but like with John Travolta, you're like, oh, Scientology is what is making you like this. And I don't, I don't know what Nick's cage problems is, but drugs probably, maybe. But he doesn't, he doesn't have that uh, aura or whatever. Agenda? Yeah, he doesn't seem to have an agenda when it comes to it. Like because Battlefield Earth, uh, that was an, a Ron L. Hubbard a Hubbard movie uh, or a book. Have you seen that one? I've never seen it. No. But it's like uh, considered one of the worst movies of all time. Yeah, just give it till February. February? Mm-hmm. What's coming out in February? Uh, for you, Battlefield Earth. Oh. 
Gotcha. I've been I thinking thought, about that one, but I thought you said wait until February. There'll be a new worst movie of all time. I uh, know it'll probably still be that one. Yeah. Well, so that those were the three punishment movies. They all broke my soul each in their own individual way. Well, Samson wasn't that bad again. That, but uh, I'm glad you watched that one first. Yeah. And then it got progressively worse. It got way worse. Um, but so to, if you want to help participate, if you want to help make Taylor lose so I can make him watch no, Battlefield. No, Earth, no this or, is too fun. <laughs> you can go over to Patreon and for a dollar, you can vote for me, Alan. And if or I have Taylor. more votes, Taylor loses, or you can vote for Taylor. And if he has more votes, I lose at the end of the month, we choose a bad movie for the loser. They have to watch it and then come back and talk about it positive <laughs> uh but yeah so that's over on patreon.com slash i seen that and we will be back in a few days with our next episode woot woot